Shares of PayPal sinking today after the company cut its annual operating margin guidance and earnings last night. Deidre Bose has been looking into the numbers and how they stack up in today's tech check. Debo. Mel, the earnings weren't great, but as some have noted, they weren't a complete disaster. The company did raise its revenue and profit outlook for the year, but the focus is on margin contraction today. There is another way, though, of looking at PayPal's fundamentals, and that is put them next to rival Block, where it competes on payments in the Venmo versus Square Cash digital wallets, P2P. In terms of free cash flow, gross margins, EBITDA, basically profitability, PayPal looks to be the better play, yet it trails Block in terms of valuation by a mile. Block's forward price-to-earnings multiple more than double that of PayPal's, something that short seller Hindenburg noted in its recent report on Block, writing, quote, to make up for these fundamental realities, Block has extensively relied on non-GAAP adjustments to report growth despite weakening metrics. The flip side, however, I was talking to Dan Dola, an analyst that covers both companies this morning, and I asked him essentially, why are investors shunning PayPal? He said, quite simply that Block is the more innovative company. Jack Dorsey has done a better job of making a viral product, alluding to Square Cash's rise in hip-hop culture, something, of course, that Hindenburg has questioned. But that innovation argument, guys, that can be seen in the top-line growth as well. Block expected to grow revenue faster this year. And it's an interesting debate it sets up, right? Because for the first half this year, investors were looking at profitability. But at least in the fintech space with these two names, they're kind of valuing revenue growth higher. For sure. And, you know, D, it also strikes me that when you have this area where, let's be honest, these are commodity services. I mean, you're, you, you know, you, I can send you cash the same way no matter what service you use. So when that's the case, if you're PayPal and you're kind of the incumbent and you have a little more market share to give up than gain when everyone is in everybody else's, you know, market, uh, it is maybe that also explains part of the, the valuation difference. Because if you look at PayPal's report, they say, well, we still are, you know, how many yeah. three quarters of e-commerce vendors still have the button on there? Well, that's just more market share to lose, not gain. Mike, I love that you bring up that idea of commoditization because I think this is a question that sort of the entire fintech industry faces. You look at an firm, right, when buy now, pay later looked really innovative, but now everyone's doing it. And PayPal is such an interesting example of that. Back in 2021, this is a company that had a market cap of more than $350 billion. It was worth more than all but one of the major banks. Today, it is worth less than all of them. And it kind of tells you that maybe these things have been commoditized. You see the rise of Zelle, right, when P2P also seemed very innovative. Now you just go into your existing app for any big bank and you're able to do that in seconds. So it raises questions on what the future valuation looks like. Can they ever reach these levels, Block or Square, or PayPal, excuse me, Block or PayPal? Um, and it's a good question. I think the fintech industry right now is wrestling with that and investors.